the flags of the 14 nations taking part in the 1987 Camel Trophy fly from the vehicles that will be home to the intrepid adventurers from four continents who are to take on the majesty of Madagascar. The 28 men taking part in the adventure of a lifetime have already been through an exhausting selection procedure, followed by an intensive program of training. And that's before they even arrived here in Diego Suarez, in the north of the world's fourth biggest island, first staging post in their quest to traverse Madagascar from north to south. There's time for last minute adjustments to be made as everyone eagerly awaits the off, including Americans Don Floyd and Tom Collins. Tom, you finally made it to Madagascar. What are your impressions so far? Well, I think it's the people in Madagascar are very nice. They uh, seem to be a very happy people. It's pretty warm here. It's going to take just a little bit to get used to that, but uh, I think it'll be nice here. Don, the last time you drove one of these Range Rovers was in uh, England when it was snowing. Uh, a bit different here. Uh, yes, definitely. It's, uh, it's a little dry right now, but um, hopefully we'll get in some mud like uh, at England and maybe it'll be about the same. Are you impressed by the vehicle, Tom? Yes, I was real impressed with it in England. I thought it was one of the better four-wheel drives I've driven. It's much better than the one I have at home. It seemed to be able to go anywhere. What do you reckon on the other teams? Oh, there's a lot of competition here. Everybody's real friendly. Um, you know, like, uh, well, we didn't see everybody drive, but I think there's, it's going to be tough. And that's just what it's supposed to be. No square inch of carrying space is wasted on these four-wheeled beasts of burden. A massive crowd of 70,000 locals turned out to see the adventurers off on their 1,500-mile trek from one end of the country to the other. And it's an impressive sight as crews from Spain and the Canaries, Britain, Belgium and Holland, Brazil and the USA, from Malaysia and Japan, Germany, Switzerland, France, Turkey and Italy line up along with the seven support vehicles. The entire province declared a national holiday in honour of the Camel Trophy's visit and people lined the streets as the Range Rover turbo diesel convoy set out, full of anticipation for what was to lie ahead. In front of them, a 280 mile journey over the last asphalt roads they'd see in the next 18 days. From now on, it's off-road all the way. The winners of the Camel Trophy will be decided over seven special tasks to be held at various points on the journey. They range from navigation and orientation exercises to a river recovery test, hill climbs and observed trials. But that's all in the future. First, there's the journey over the rolling Malagasy countryside. The real rough stuff will come later. Before that first special task, there's a well-earned rest for the teams, the last real let-up in the schedule, and a chance to soak up some of the local atmosphere. There's time for the Dutch team of Fons van Uers and Kerit Dammer to share a cup of coffee and to have a long think about just what you've let yourself in for while waiting for the later arrivals. Early morning at Maromandia as the crews prepare for the first special task. They'll go in alphabetical order. That means Belgium first, followed by Brazil, the Canary Islands, France and the Netherlands. The going's tough, and the first crews are forced to use the winches to complete the task within the four-minute time limit. Holland will prove to be the fastest of the winches. The Belgian team of Philippe Cousin and Frank de Dobelier find the going painfully slow.
while the Brazilians are forced to resort to brute strength. France, who won the 1986 Camel Trophy, fall their way to 12th place, but they're about to become the first victims of serious mechanical difficulties, breaking a Range Rover differential shortly after this special task. A brave blast through the glutinous mud by Canary Islanders Carlos Penko and Manuel Almeida. But it's all to no avail, and they too are forced to get out and winch their way to the finish. With conditions improving as the task progressed, the Germans proved to be the first to power their way through without having to resort to the winch. Franz Alt and Jürgen Kelber triumphant. Italy, with off-road rally specialist Vincenzo Tota at the wheel, were next. For the Japanese, it was a case of foot down and point forward. And it worked, much to the delight of Toshiharu Urabi. Malaysians Halim Abdul Rahman and Si Ying He made third fastest time despite a few hair raising moments. And this is the Spanish team of Jamie Puig and Victor Muntan. They finished fifth best. Switzerland, that's Jean-Pierre Falci and Daniel Nicolier. And Turkey. Betting Cap and Kazim Ayer were slowest of the non-winchers in ninth. But with diesel turbo racing, it was the British team of George B and the oldest man in the event, Ian Chapman, who set the pace and grabbed the first special task win of the 1987 Camel Trophy. The USA were still to come, but they could only manage fourth fastest over the 100 metre course. For Britain then, maximum points, but their good fortune wasn't to stay with them. This was to be their first and last stage win. As the people of Madagascar celebrated 40 years of independence, the Camel Trophy trekkers forged deeper into the mountains and towards some of the most difficult terrain of the entire journey. In the first three days, the Camel Trophy train travelled over 400 miles. On day four, it managed a mere 27. The tropical monsoons have only recently passed, and many trails are little more than rivers of liquid mud. Brazilians Gilberto Castro and Paulo Bergamaschi opt for the outside lane in their attempt to bypass a deep mud patch. Just inches from disaster, the South Americans are forced to rethink their strategy. But as always with the Camel Trophy, there's help near at hand. The British try the straightforward attack. And make it, blazing a trail for those to follow. Malaysia. Then the Canaries find the same tactics to their liking. 
and the Camel Trophy convoy assembles ready for its next challenge. At the tiny town of Ansoe, there's a stop to cool off after the exertions of the last few days. It's been a constant 35 degrees during the long and gruelling days. And that's outside. In the cabs themselves, it's been well over 40 degrees. Time to refuel the hard-working Range Rovers as the town goes about its business. That's a sign for the local beer, a terrible temptation for the trekkers, but a clear head's essential for the Camel Trophy. They drive by night. But there's no more welcoming sight than the overnight camp just outside the town. Where Graham Fazakali briefs the drivers on the vital importance of good maintenance. Go around some of the suspension uh, fixings and prop shaft fixings and all those sort of things. As I said before, if you take a lot of care now, it'll save a lot of trouble later on. There's always midnight oil to be burned. But the prospect of a fish feast afterwards makes it all worthwhile. This silver tube is home for the Camel Trophy adventurers for the duration of their stay on mysterious Madagascar, the island which was once part of mainland Africa but broke away a million years ago. A clear and bright Madagascar dawn. And Camp Camel Trophy prepares to move on. The terrain is still very rough and progress is painfully slow. In these conditions it's vitally important to make sure that every bit of equipment is securely lashed down. Um, excuse me you Dutchman, you seem to have forgotten something. Never mind, the friendly Belgians have picked it up. Not that the Netherlanders even seem to have missed anything. But that spare wheel seems to have a mind of its own. It doesn't want to stay aboard the Belgian vehicle either. And it looks like they could do with an extra wheel. It's a case of send for the winch again. Gently does it. Every yard travelled is a hard-fought advance towards the ultimate goal. The Italians have been the most successful nation in the competition since it became truly international in 1982, winning in Papua New Guinea and in Brazil. Now they're attempting their third win with the impressive crew of Mauro Miele and Vincenzo Tota. Miele, a former World Championship motocross rider, and Tota, an off-road rally specialist. 
The second special task is to be a navigation trial, as organiser Chris Drew explains to some of the competitors. Uh, if we have 14 ties for first place, that's what we're going to have, because we can't have a rally race. That's not what it is. It's an orientation thing. And four hours is the maximum. So we've got plenty, plenty of time. time. Oh, yeah. Everywhere on the route, the villagers are anxious to see just what's going on, and they turn out in their thousands. The Spanish team of Victor Montan and Jamie Puig get underway. Teams have to navigate their way across country to a predetermined point within the four hour time limit. The organisers have measured the distance as 44 kilometres and the team clocking nearest to that distance wins. <laughs> 